Hey guys, so this episode is going to be all about histamine, you know, what it is, what drives it, and then of course the best part, what action steps can we take to actually fix or balance these underlying imbalances that are driving these issues. Because in all honesty, you know, this idea of histamine intolerance, it doesn't really fly with me. And I always want to ask, well, why is my body intolerant to something? There has to be a reason. Now, just remember, nothing in this video is medical advice. It shouldn't be taken to treat or prescribe or diagnose anything. It's just for education and inspiration only. Make sure you're talking with your doctor or the appropriate practitioners um, before making any changes to your your diet or your supplement regimen but with that being said you know it's always nice to understand our bodies on a deeper level and to understand why something might be happening so we can make empowered decisions as to how we're gonna go about it because I feel like the functional medicine space they're really leaving a lot lacking in regards to histamine you know their first line is just like oh you know cut histamine producing foods like you're just intolerant to histamine and I truly um, I don't believe in histamine intolerance they're there's definitely histamine issues. There's definitely people that are struggling with histamine, um, but it's because of a deeper root problem. And instead of dealing with that deeper root problem, oftentimes people are kind of stuck in this place where they're just restricting histamine producing foods or histamine stimulating foods, and they're just still kind of dealing with their symptoms. So, you know, we always ask the question here at Just Cash Wellness, why is something happening? Because that's often where we find our fix for it, is why is it happening in the first place? Let's get to the bottom of it. Let's fix that and then let's see if the symptoms dissipate or go away and oftentimes they do not always but oftentimes they do now what are symptoms of having high histamine or histamine intolerance or not being able to clear histamine well you know first we have to understand what histamines are they're a part of our immune system they kind of play a role in getting things out of the body that are irritating to the body so they have a, a very important role um, they also play a role in in digestion things like creation of stomach acid and stuff like that so histamine in it of itself is not bad it's when it builds up in the body or it gets into a place where it doesn't belong or our body doesn't have the raw materials it needs or the environment it needs to break it down and you know small amounts of histamine are helping clear irritants but large amounts of histamine are gonna cause symptoms like you know when your eyes get really itchy or you get like the symptoms of allergies or running nose or um, just allergies in general like you're very sensitive to pollen changes maybe you're allergic to a lot of animals like that can be a sign of high histamine I'm um, turning really red especially around your neck you know when you touch your neck or your chest and you turn really really red um getting like having heat intolerance so when you get really hot you get really really hot and really really bright red and you almost start to feel itchy all over histamine um rosacea can sometimes like rosacea like symptoms can get worse when you have high histamine um headaches you can get headaches and migraines from high histamine and then in more serious cases of having a lot of histamine or overproduction of histamine and you're not clearing it you can get things like hives or rashes um on the skin and some women actually get nauseous or i should say people often get nauseous and can even vomit this can happen oftentimes like when women are on their period histamine plays a role in like cramps and prostaglandin production and also PMS especially when there's like nausea and vomiting involved um, crampy periods can be because of histamine especially if you're trying to narrow down what's driving it and then feeling like wired and stimulated after eating histamine producing foods or histamine stimulating foods which we'll go over in a moment um, but remember guys that intolerance or uh, intolerances are often malfunctions of the body or deep imbalances it doesn't mean that we're broken it means that our body actually doesn't have the right resources or we've created this really stressful environment that the body can no longer do what it was made to do and that's when we really start to have these symptoms and so we we need to stop blaming histamine for the problem and start digging deeper and saying what's going on why am I making a lot of histamine um, why is my histamine high am I not breaking it down well um, am I not clearing it do I have leaky gut so it's getting in you know the intestinal permeability is allowing it to where it doesn't belong and it's causing more symptoms than it should we kind of have to boil it down and oftentimes it's a multitude of factors so let's go over what actually uh, the factors that can drive these histamine issues so you're gonna find surprise surprise that these issues all are gonna kind of boil down to metabolic issues and inflammation 
surprise, surprise, like everything does. Um, but we're gonna dig a little deeper and I'll probably be glancing at my notes here and there just cause I wrote down a lot of notes and I don't wanna miss anything. Um, but I'll try to, I'll try to look at you as much as I can. I just, uh, I got a glance down to be reminded of a few things. So, you know, the first thing that you're gonna hear in the histamine space is all about this DAO enzyme. Now the DAO enzyme is an enzyme that our body produces that is primarily responsible for breaking down histamine. So, you know, our body will respond, like once the histamine does its job, the DAO enzyme will come in and actually break that down or degrade it so it's no longer, you know, it's no longer active. And oftentimes when people have histamine issues, the DAO enzyme is low or they're, they're having a hard time making this DAO enzyme. Now remember, the DAO enzyme is actually made in a few different organs. So primarily the kidneys, but also the thymus gland. And then it's also made in the intestinal lining. And so first and foremost, we need to ask ourselves, are our kidneys healthy? Um, how's our thymus gland, which is often taking such a huge hit when we're under stress. It'll actually completely start to disintegrate under stress. We can actually eat through our thymus gland quite quickly. And then our intestinal lining, which is, you know, our gut health is huge in histamine. So oftentimes when we ask ourselves th these things, we're like, no, our kidneys are taking a huge hit with heavy metals or, you know, we're not detoxing well, our gut's in a, a mess and, you know, we're under a ton of stress. Our thymus gland's under a ton of stress. Our immune system's under a ton of stress. There's our answer right there oftentimes like we just gotta like get that under control oftentimes when we just like support detoxification get our gut health a little bit better and you know get our stress levels down and our lymph or immune system back functioning surprise surprise our histamine issues start to really resolve themselves but there are a few other things to remember when it comes to making dao enzyme so copper is a huge component of manufacturing dao and if we are copper deficient which a lot of people are deficient in that really strong bioavailable copper or we're overloaded with iron there's our, our problem oftentimes. So we need copper and we also need B vitamins, specifically B, vitamin B6 to manufacture DAO. And if we don't have those things or we're depleted in those things, that can actually have us take a huge hit. So the DAO enzyme is kind of the first the first thing, but that's not the only thing because in reality, you know, a lot of people will start taking DAO enzyme because you can purchase it and they're like, I don't feel any better. And it's because that's not the only factor when it comes to histamine issues. So the second thing we have to remember is certain bacteria strains, specifically a lot of lactobacillus bacteria strains, have the power to actually turn the amino acid histidine into histamines. So a lot of people actually get themselves into histamine issues by overdoing it on lactic acid fermented foods, lots of sauerkraut, lots of kombucha, lots of just fermented foods in general, or taking really crappy probiotics that are not formulated for the human gut or formulated strategically or apply to their body and actually are now, this, this bacteria is actually now turning histidine into histamine faster than they can break it down. So the gut bacteria balance plays a huge role in histamine and if you're taking a lot of probiotics or you have in the past um, that's probably your issue is just a very imbalanced ecosystem because bifidobacterium at least the ones that are native to the human digestive tract are actually histamine degrading so they'll break it down so when you have a really balanced ecosystem of bacteria in your gut the histamine producing bacteria are going to be balanced out by the histamine degrading bacteria but when you take too much lactobacillus your bifido can go down and that's when you really have a hard time degrading histamine and we now have all these histamine activating uh, bacteria without the ones that degrade them. The third thing to remember is prostaglandins. So those little hormone like compounds that are present in a lot of when you're inflamed or you have a lot of inflammation, which often comes from the gut, prostaglandins will actually activate histamine. This is why women who um, are sensitive to histamine will find that their, their menstrual cramping gets worse or um, their PMS gets worse is because prostaglandins and histamine are kind of you know, hand in hand and histamine can cause that nausea and vomiting that happens during the period or the really intense cramping. And so you'll find as you reduce prostaglandins, you'll also reduce histamine and vice versa because they do play a role in one another. In addition to inflammation, we can also talk about how estrogen and histamine have such an intimate role. So, you know, estrogen will stimulate histamine and histamine will stimulate estrogen. And often women are coming to me both inflamed and estrogen dominant and 
or they have estrogen excess and progesterone deficiency. And estrogen also stimulates inflammation. So we have this like triple whammy where estrogen is stimulating histamine, uh, inflammation is stimulating histamine. And for people that don't have the DAO enzyme to break it down or the gut bacteria to break it down, they're the ones that are gonna really, really be struggling. I mean, a lot of people will struggle, but specifically when, when it's causing really severe histamine issues, it's usually these multitude of factors kind of working together. And then speaking of the gut, so we have to remember that the gut is this kind of entity that should kind of stay separate from the bloodstream. We do get a lot of nutrients that go into the bloodstream, but a lot of the toxins and, and bacteria and lipopolysaccharides or endotoxins that are being produced in the gut should stay localized to the gut except for when we have leaky gut or intestinal permeability, and now things are getting into the bloodstream where they do not belong. So endotoxins or lipopolysaccharides, these really inflammatory compounds that bacteria will create, absolutely stimulate histamine. And what can happen is not only are the lipopolysaccharides stimulating histamine, but now histamine is making its way into the bloodstream as our lipopolysaccharides because we have intestinal permeability. This goes back to poor bacteria ecosystem. So the bacteria really regulate the mucosal barrier quite tightly as does thyroid function and adrenal function. And if our intestines are very irritated on a regular basis or our bacterial ecosystem ecosystem is super messed up, our mucosal barrier is going to start to degrade. And remember, uh, DAO enzyme is actually manufactured in the intestinal lining. And on top of it, you know, we don't want a bunch of histamine just getting into the bloodstream, just leaking into, into the bloodstream. And so we really need to protect the integrity of the mucosal barrier in the gut. So now after that spiel, I hope you kind of understand that there are a lot of different factors that can often play a role. Now let's talk about what we're gonna do about it and how to go about it. Because chances are you're like, well, I just keep reacting to these histamine containing foods or histamine um, producing foods like, you know, aged cheeses, sometimes it's citrus, sometimes it's certain fruits, um, bone broth, um, wine, beer, anything that cooks for a long time or anything that sits out for a long time. So like leftovers, the longer that uh, something has gone from being cooked, like the more histamine will be produced on that food. So you're reacting to leftovers, you're reacting to collagen maybe, bone broth. And a lot of these foods are foods that we include in fully nourished, specifically like bone broth, aged cheese, like parmesan, Parmesan and citrus like OJ and so you're like uh, I'm reacting to these foods like what do I do well a lot of times we have to figure out what we're reacting to like the things that are causing you discomfort of course don't consume them but in the meantime we want to be working on the underlying imbalances don't force yourself to eat these foods if if you're very uncomfortable or you're getting tons and tons of symptoms from them but taking them out of the diet for good doesn't fix the underlying issues. I hope that, you know, learning about histamine has kind of made that you aware of that is reducing histamine producing foods is fine just to, to ease your discomfort, but you gotta fix the issues that are involved or your, your relief is only gonna be temporary. So the first thing that we need to figure out is what's what's causing the most inflammation and, and prostaglandin production. And that of course is PUFAs. Polyunsaturated fatty acids have got to go. This is why, you know, fully nourished is fundamentally a PUFA free program or low PUFA. And we focus on these high quality traditional animal fats and saturated fats for this primary reason. is So we wanna reduce the things that are gonna drive our metabolic distress up and we wanna include the things that are gonna drive that stress down. And that's gonna be those high quality saturated fats that are, have those nu nutrient dense fat soluble vitamins. We also need to be aware of phytoestrogens coming in and gut irritating foods. They're usually one and the same, specifically like nuts and seeds. Those are gonna probably be the most irritating just because they are not only phytoestrogenic, but they also have tons of phytic acid and tons of anti-nutrients that really irritate the digestive tract. And unfortunately, a lot of women are cutting dairy because they're told it's histamine producing and they're replacing it with nuts and seeds, which is not much better. So start to be aware of how nuts and seeds and even things like beans and grains are affecting your digestive system. Um, you know, even uncooked vegetables, like raw vegetables can be irritating, as can cruciferous vegetables. So figure out, for, figure out your tolerance to those foods and start paying attention to how they affect your hormones and digestion and at least be very conscious of how you're preparing them. So beans and grains should be heirloom and ancient and soaked and sprouted if possible, or at least soaked 
about, you know, always consuming things for digestibility. And then, you know, speaking of dairy, so a lot of people, you know, dairy aggravates their histamine issues or they're being told that dairy aggravates their histamine issues. You have to remember that A1 dairy, the hybridized dairy, um, can absolutely increase histamine in the body. Whereas A2 dairy actually doesn't always do that. Now for some people it can, but for a lot of people that have histamine issues, A2 dairy works fine for them. It's the A1 dairy that's the problem. And that's a polymorphism of casein. So the protein in that milk has been changed by hybridizing cows and hybridizing is, is a loose word, um, or breeding them for, for genetic potential. And so we wanna be focused on like sheep's milk, goat's milk, or A2 cow's milk, um, just meaning that's how milk has always been until quite recently, and see if you do better with A2. Because sometimes dairy doesn't have to be cut out, it just needs to be the right type of dairy. And then, you know, speaking of estrogen, be very conscious of the estrogens in your environment. You know, what are you putting on your skin? What are you putting on your face? What are your cleaning products made of? Um, are you using a bunch of like fragrance scented candles and, and uh, you know, room spray and things like that? What's your laundry detergent like? You know, we don't want a bunch of endocrine disruptors, you know, all over our body and all over our environment because those are estrogenic and estrogen drives histamine up. So be aware of the chemicals in your environment. Now, all those things are talked about in fully nourished and oftentimes this is why over time fully nourished students say that their histamine issues do get better is because they're working on estrogen consistently they're they're doing these steps and so as their hormone shifts so do does their inflammation and so do their histamine issues but in addition it's important to kind of focus on a few extra things so we want to reduce irritations in the gut so that's partly finding what works for our bodies and what doesn't all the while reducing endotoxins or lipopolysaccharides. So this is where the raw carrot salad comes in. It, it is endotoxin binding, and this is why it's so important to be doing the raw carrot salad every single day. But adding a few doses of activated charcoal per week can also be very, very helpful. Now we don't wanna do activated charcoal too much because it does bind to everything, minerals, that kind of thing, um, supplements, medications. So it needs to be taken away from all of those things. But activated charcoal can be very, very good at absorbing endotoxin very, very well. And, and that can really reduce the symptoms quite a bit when used pretty consistently as long as it's far enough apart from each other. And then, you know, soothing the digestive tract is the next step. So oftentimes people with histamine issues can't tolerate collagen and can't tolerate bone broth, but a lot of them can tolerate gelatin. So this is an overlooked um, source of glycine that shouldn't be overlooked. Make sure you're blooming your gelatin properly and then use something that doesn't have histamine in it to make gummies or jello and see if you can tolerate it because oftentimes gelatin can be tolerated and it soothes the lining of the gut like nothing else which can really help kind of seal that mucosal barrier up. Vitamin E is also an amazing compound to use strategically with histamine issues for some people. So vitamin E um, is very powerful at both reducing prostaglandins and also uh, blocking estrogen or helping with estrogen detoxification. So it's a double whammy. And um, oftentimes people with histamine issues find that vitamin E improves their issues quite a bit. Now we also want to reduce the things that lower DAO enzyme production. So we're going back to that enzyme that degrades histamine. Alcohol and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like Advil and or ibuprofen and Aleve and stuff like that, yeah, those are gonna really reduce our ability to make DAO enzyme and that's gonna take away our ability to degrade histamine. So be very conscious with the alcohol, be very conscious with using ibuprofen and things like that um, because you wanna be able to, to make as much DAO enzyme as possible. And then all the while increasing the things that help us make DAO enzyme. So I actually use like to use grass-fed beef thymus by ancestral supplements for like acute issues just because it kind of can help reduce symptoms for some people the same thing goes with grass-fed beef kidney um, those two are very rich in, in DAO and also copper and copper is so important so we want to be getting our copper levels up with grass-fed beef liver um, some high quality chlorophyll maybe and high quality vitamin C from whole food sources like camu camu powder or acerola cherry those types of things especially if we can't tolerate citrus we got to get it from some other source um, and then vitamin B 
6, like I mentioned before, very important for production of DAO enzyme as is magnesium. So those are kind of nutrients that if we really wanna be making enough DAO, we gotta make sure that we're not really depleted in those nutrients or deficient in those nutrients because that's gonna really affect our ability to break down histamine. Now, sometimes the addition of um, bacteria that degrade histamine can be very effective. You just have to be very careful sourcing your probiotic to make sure they don't have actual histamine activating or histamine increasing strains of bacteria as well in that probiotic. So um, you're looking for bifidobacterium. You want to stay true to what's native to the human digestive tract. So we never want to take like bifidobacterium animalis, for example, but bifidobacterium infantis, that strain of bacteria actually is very particularly good at breaking down histamine. So um, I really like a bifido maximus by the Gut Institute. I think hyperbiotics has a bifidobacterium infantis, as does, um, I want to say it's like called lifted mood boosting um, histamine free uh, probiotics. So there are a few out there, but we're looking for those high quality strains of bifidobacterium. And lastly, you know, I wasn't going to forget this one. Get your progesterone levels up because progesterone helps balance out that estrogen, helps lower inflammation, helps lower prostaglandins, and truly helps with histamine issues when we have enough progesterone. Many women with histamine issues are progesterone deficient or haven't been ovulating regularly, not making enough progesterone, don't have the nutrients to make progesterone, and oftentimes getting progesterone levels up, getting a regular ovulation, does wonders for the whole body. This is why we always focus on ovulation in Fully Nourished. That's why the whole program is made, making sure that we are having a healthy cycle is because when those hormones are working properly as a symphony as they should, the female body functions so much better on every single level. So make sure you're nourishing yourself well, make sure you're getting enough calories, make sure you're not overstressing your body the heck out and support your body foundations and its biology and you will see things improve.